This is Werner Herzog, hello. Hello, Mr. Herzog, how are you today? Good, where are you physically? I am in Sydney, Australia. My name is Matthew. Okay, yeah, so we seem to be 17 hours apart. Yes, it looks like that way. How, are you, how is your day so far? I'm calling, I'm speaking from Los Angeles. Excellent. You, you currently reside in Los Angeles, don't you? Pardon? You currently reside in Los Angeles, don't you? Yes, uh, but uh, you shouldn't misunderstand it. I'm not, I'm not residing, you, you say it right, in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm not here f because of Hollywood. Yep. Although I, I always have some sort of, of uh, connections, or, or sometimes common borderlines with, connect, uh, with uh, Hollywood, but I'm here because I'm happily married <laughs> in Los Angeles. That's good to hear. Okay, um, we, uh, I'd like to talk about your new film. Um, when did you first hear about the Chauvel Cave? Um, about half a year before I made the film, or, or uh, seven months or so before I made the film, I was pointed out uh, to an article which uh, appeared in the New Yorker magazine by a producer with whom I did uh, Grizzly Man and Encounters at the End of the World the film in Antarctica. So, and, and he was almost timid whether I might be interested in something like this. And I immediately said, yes, of course, sure. <laughs> I have this burning fascination about uh, uh, Paleolithic art since uh, I was a, a, a young adolescent. Yeah. And when you first entered the cave and saw yeah, those paintings... I, I had to do this. Yes, yes. When you first entered the cave and saw those paintings, what were your first impressions? Well, it's indescribable. Yeah. Indescribable. It's a, a sense of wonder, a sense of awe. And that was exactly what I wanted to get across to an audience. Yeah. When you found out that those paintings were 30,000, 35,000 year old, years old, were you astonished to find that humans expressed themselves artistically so long ago? Well, everyone is, is astounded by it, yep. uh, because the oldest paintings that we know, the oldest dated paintings uh, in uh, central southern France, uh, like Lascaux or in the Pyrenees, Altamira, they are o only, I say only now in quotes, are only 12,000, 13, 14,000 years uh, back in age, back in time. But... Um, now, what was found in Chauvet Cave, um, in the gorges of the Ardes River, uh, is more than twice as old, and completely and absolutely accomplished. You said that um, you believe these paintings mark the awakening of the modern human soul. What exactly did you mean by that statement? Well, um, it has to be understood uh, in the context of of the situation and in the context of the film. Yep. What we know is that at the same time, 32,000 years, 35,000 years ago, Neanderthal men roamed the same valley. There's evidence of the presence of, of Neanderthal men, but Neanderthal men had no culture in the, in the modern sense, which means figurative representations, which means music instruments, which means uh, first traces of religious belief systems, which means uh, uh, little statuettes, um, um, I mean sculptures, mostly Venuses, by the way, yep. Venus figures of women with uh, enormously uh, uh, accentuated uh, uh, fertility signs, breasts were which uh, put everything that we see in, in Baywatch in, yep. into, into the shadows. <laughs> so, um, uh, yes, we, we know this in a way is the first, um, the first awakening of the human soul. Maybe they in the future will find other caves with even older paintings and, and evidence of humans uh, at artistic work. Uh, but this is the first evidence of, of the modern human soul. You were faced with a lot of restrictions when filming inside the cave. 
How do you prepare yourself logistically for such a film shoot? Well, you have no choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, is, it was not a caprice uh, that we had these restrictions. You have to understand this cave was sealed as a perfect time capsule for more than 20,000 years. Mm -hmm. And um, everything is completely fresh. Everything is uh, left as if it were left yesterday. And uh, we know that uh, too many tourists in other caves, uh, like in Lascaux, uh, left uh, a mold on the wall from human breath, mm -hmm. uh, human sweat, human exhalations and vapors. And, and this mold cannot be controlled anymore, so they had to shut it down. And they're extremely cautious. So our restrictions was, I was only allowed three people with us. Yeah only allowed equipment that we could carry in our hands. Um, we could only film from a, a 60 centimeter wide walkway, a metal walkway. We would never be allowed to step uh, onto the floor of the cave and set a tripod or hide behind the camera. And time restrictions. We were only allowed four hours per day and that's only throughout one week. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge, but we met the challenge, I think. Yes, I think, yeah, very, very much so. Um, when did the idea first strike you that 3D could be used in the filming of this documentary? Well, I never really planned to do it in 3D until I was lucky enough that I persuaded the French to allow me into the cave one hour a few months before I started shooting. Yep. So I was in the cave for one hour. I was there with my wife. We were allowed in there. No cameras, no photos, nothing. But we, we were in there. And all of a sudden I see that there is fantastic formations in the cave of stalactites and stalagmites and columns. And, and then the paintings themselves are not on flat surfaces. It's, it's a wild drama of uh, cave walls, uh, bulges, niches, pendants, and all this was utilized by the artist for, for dramatic effect, and it was immediately clear this had to be 3D. Yeah. And what are your impressions of 3D filmmaking as a whole? I'm skeptical, and apparently statistics show that uh, uh, numbers are slightly declining now of people who are willing to pay a ticket. Uh, uh, and I believe it has to do with our sense of going to the theaters where we, of course, can witness great fireworks like, let's say, Avatar. Mm -hmm. And it's legitimate because uh, there's a legitimate interest by a lot of audiences. So we have to take it seriously. But at the same time, we want to dream in a theater. We want to, as an audience, develop a parallel, a separate story, which only occurs in our hearts, like in a, in a love story. Mm -hmm. Hope and wish that the lovers find, find each other beyond all obstacles. So um, a, a parallel story that only occurs within the audience but when you are looking at the firework, firework, firework of 3D, uh, we see the fireworks and we do not experience the second story, mm -hmm. which is inside of us. And um, uh, uh, this, uh, this type of cinema will never go extinct. Mm -hmm. With filmmakers such as Martin Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola now using 3D in their films, do you think that 3D might be viewed in the future as a more credible format? Not really, no. I think uh, uh, there is a credibility to our collective dreams. Mm -hmm. And we dream much better if we are not in 3D. Mm -hmm. It's a strange thing. Yeah. But yes, there is. Uh, we have technology now. 3D is nothing new. I mean, we had it in the 50s in cinema already. Mm -hmm. and, and it was not, not really... Uh, bad 3D, it was quite accomplished already in the 50s. Um, no, it doesn't give more credibility to anything. It's uh, in a film like Cave of Forgotten Dreams, 
when you, when you are two minutes in the in the movie, you know, yes, in this case, it, it was imperative because it may be the only document that will reach spectators who are not allowed into the cave. Yeah. Your filmography consists of both feature films and documentaries. Um, what makes you choose what type of um, project you're going to do next? What type of criteria do you have? It's, uh, you see, I, I, I do not ponder over my career, what should I do next? The films always keep stumbling into me. It's almost like <laughs> uninvited guests hmm. uh, that show up at, in, in, at your house. And how do you get them out the window? Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it's like burglars, <laughs> uh, uh, burglars in your kitchen. They all come like burglars in the night at me. <laughs> so uh, I do where, where the... Uh, I do the project that pushes me hardest. Yeah. And there are always four, five, six, seven projects pushing me mm -hmm. and, and uh, becoming vociferous and becoming uh, somehow crowding in my, uh, in my heart, crowding in my home. Yeah. Mr. Herzog, I thank you very much for your time today and congratulations with your film. Uh, thank you very much. Very mm -hmm. kind of you. Okay, goodbye.